With that information, we can now go to the flight computer, to the wind side of the flight computer, and figure out exactly what effect the wind is going to have. But let's talk some terminology first. In the center of the wind side of the flight computer, we've got a clear plastic disc that can rotate. And we'll be turning it a little later on as we work out a wind problem. We also have a compass rose that we'll be using for headings and for courses. Across the bottom of the flight computer on the wind side, we've got boxes that we'll look at closely later on. We'll be filling those in to help us step our way through the problem. From true course, wind correction angle to true heading, magnetic variation to magnetic heading, compass deviation to compass heading, the boxes will guide us along. All we have to do is fill them in in order to get the correct answer. Take a look at the slide now, at the arcs in here and the numbers on them. These arcs are wind strength arcs or ground speed arcs, depending on exactly what we're working with at the moment. And notice that the numbers on them are fairly low numbers, 80, 90, 100. They go up from 50 to 200. On some flight computers, the other side of the slide has wind strength arcs that are labeled from about 250 up to about 600. If that's what you see, you've got the jet airplane side in, and you need to take the slide out, turn it around, and put it back in again. But the slide in the King Schools flight computer only has one set of wind arcs on it, and there's no way to get confused. Up at the very top of the flight computer on the wind side, there are some directions that you can follow along with and step through on exactly how to work a wind problem in order to determine ground speed and your wind correction angle. That's what this side of the flight computer is designed to tell us what our ground speed is and how many degrees of wind correction angle we're going to have to carry.